four will be at the main gate on the way out. Four will be in the middle gate next to the gate that Peter was. Then four will be with the, the immediate gate that surrounded Peter. And then they brought two heavily harm to stand on the right and on the left of Simon Peter. In case anything were to rescue you. In case any assistance want to come from anywhere. And that's not the end. Then they now tie his legs with chain. They tie his hand with what? With chains. And he was sitting hopelessly. Every man effort to rescue him was over. Every assistance that would have come from people was impossible. No way a man in that circumstances can get out. They were watching him. They have all it takes to keep Peter there perpetually. In that situation, God decided, I want to show myself as God. There is somebody here today, your case is so tight. Except God decides to prove himself as God, you can still remain there. But because your God is the almighty deliverer, he will stand up for you today. Amen. Somebody let me hear you prolong that almighty deliverer. Almighty. Okay, you have just shouted it, groan it. Almighty deliverer. Inside of Peter, there was no more opportunity to pray. Few days ago, he stood up and thousands of people got converted. One of the reasons why Peter was snatched was because so that he would not go about preaching again. So that he will not commit, he will not carry out the assignment that God has given him grace to do. So that he will not be winning more souls to God's kingdom. And I want to announce to someone in the house, if you are bound by the enemy, if you are tied down and you can no longer perform, it's because they have seen the future. And they knew that you have something to carry out that is glorious. And the only way to restrict you is to bound you. But may I announce to you, the almighty deliverer is here today. In the next few minutes, he will begin to perform his operation. On that occasion, Simon was sitting in between two heavily harmed soldiers. If at all the chain fell off, the soldiers have their guns. If at all the soldiers were sleeping, the high on gates would prevent him from going out. There were several reasons why Peter should not go, where human effort must have failed. Listen to me, men and brethren. Understand it very clearly. Understand it very, very clearly. I think in, my, in one of the messages I sent to my friends on Facebook, I said, difficulties in our lives are just miracles about to show up. All difficulties, no matter how tight your circumstances and situations, they're just miracles that are yet to manifest. When God decides to step in, circumstances give way. And in your situation today, I don't know how much that thing has been. So tight that nobody can release you. So bad that no help can come from anybody. You are so much inside that situation that if God himself don't show up, no assistance from anyone. May I announce to somebody in the house? The 
mighty deliverer. The Bible says the church resumed to pray for Peter. Let me hear louder, amen. amen. The church decided to start to pray. And as they were praying, here comes surprises. Psalm 62. Psalm 62. I'm reading for you verse number 11. God has spoken once. Twice have I had this. That power belongeth unto God. It does not belong to the power of the United States of America. It does not belong to Russia. Power belongeth unto God. Jeremiah 10. I'm reading verse number 13. Verse 12, sorry. He had made the earth by his power, including the chains, the iron gates, including the men that were standing around Peter. He had made the earth by his power. He had established the world by his wisdom and has stretched out the heavens by his description. Then who then can stand on his way? In Psalm 79, verse number 11, all I want you to cry for today, almighty deliverer. I have seen situations you will never believe anything can happen. I have seen cases that are worse than yours. The almighty deliverer has stepped into matters that nobody will ever think something good will come out of. In your circumstances today, it does not matter who is reinforcing the powers and the kingdoms of darkness surrounding your circumstances. The almighty deliverer. Unless he has not made up his mind to do it, who can hinder him? He's the door by himself. Psalm 79, verse number 11. Let the same of the prisoner come before thee according to the greatness of thy power preserve thou those who are appointed to die preserve according to your power and I'm announcing to you in the house today some of you that have been in the cage for more than 42 years the God that I serve will come with furious anger it will deliver you tonight. Those of us that are big, somebody called me from this Canada here. I can't remember the particular city or county or state. I don't know what you call the rest of them. Some years ago and few years, like about seven, eight years ago, I said, please, Pastor, I attended a naming ceremony and you were the one who did the naming. And you gave me your card. I told you I came from Canada. And then, that was all. But see, I'm calling you now because I'm married to a medical doctor and I've been diagnosed that I have cancer of the breast. And I only had one daughter. I want to have more children. Pastor, I only don't know who to call. But I just was searching my bag. I found one of your cards. I don't know who you are. I just remember I met you in a naming ceremony. I said, I can't come to Canada. But can I give you a word? And I, she said, yes. I said, go to the book of Psalm 139. Don't write it down. Otherwise, you will pay. If you write it down, you will pay me. <laughs> Psalm 139, start reading from verses number 14, 15, and 16. And I want to pray. Lay your hand on those verses. I am not the healer. That is the great almighty deliverer. Place your hands there. I want to pray. And I started to pray. She said amen. I said God bless you. 
That's all I can do for you. Bye bye. Few more weeks later, she called. Man of God! When she called me the first time, she didn't call me man of God. She said, sir. But this time, man of God! My husband didn't believe when I told her I have prayed. She took me back to the hospital. Sir, it is gone! The almighty, the almighty deliverer. What no man can fix, my God, much more, is much more able to do. On the case of Peter, I'm rounding up right now there. She was in the midst of the two heavily harmed soldiers. Is that right? They were watching. And she's tied with chain. I mean, he's tied with chain in his feet and his uh, hands. Am I right? And then there were gates of hyons that were preventing him from going out. Is that right? Do you know that the gates of Hion, the bounds that held you down, and the people that were watching over your case to make sure you remain bound. When God Almighty decides to rise up, it will be like you are dreaming. So Peter was right there. Then God knew very, very well at this time. I don't have to send human being to this place. I cannot do that because this situation is above human power. These circumstances, no man can help as fast as I want it. So therefore, he engaged an angel. Go now. Listen to me. I don't remember who gave the angel the GPS or map quest to know where Peter was located. Are you hearing me, everybody? I don't know if there's a telephone call to know the address. Okay, leave that alone. I don't know who told the angel the exact room amidst millions or hundreds of thousands or hundreds of prisoners. And lo and behold, it was night. Why can the angel mistakenly touch someone else? May I just tell somebody in the house, your deliverance this morning is coming directly to where you are. Yeah. It cannot be hindered because God will locate you at the point of your own need right now. Peter was in the prison. And the angel stepped in. Listen to me. I want to read from there. In verse number 6. And when Herod would have brought him forth. I told you last time. The expectations of the wicked. We have already treated that. The same night. Was Peter between two. He was sleeping between two soldiers. Between what? With chain in his hand. And keep us before the doors. Kept the prison. Listen. Look up everybody. How did the angel pass through the doors? How did the angels find his way in? When the keepers were there, they kept the door. They have been watching that nobody should pass here. And they were not sleeping. And the gates of Hion were still there. But unconsciously to them, the angels step inside. Let me tell somebody in the house. This day, all that has hindered your deliverance, today they will move out of the way. 
The Bible says the angel came in. I don't know whether he came with morning flight or afternoon flight. But he stepped into that place. Listen to this. And this is why I'm shocked. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him. And a light shine. There will be distribution of powers in the house today. Yeah. Those who need wealth, you will receive your miracle. Yeah. Those who need healing, you will receive your miracle. Yeah. Those who need deliverances, you receive your miracle. Yeah. Those who need children, you will apportion your own. Yeah. Everything that you desire today, the Lord in his mighty power will step into it. Yeah. Listen to this. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him. And the light shines in the prison. Listen to me. What happened in the prison? Somebody say one. The angel of the Lord came and the light shined. Number one. And he smoked Peter's on the side. In other words, the light that shines don't wake Peter. Peter was still there bound and was still snoring. And the light shines and the guy was still sleeping. Listen. When God is ready for you, he will bypass your efforts. He will look away from your unbelief. He steps in and proves I am God over your doubts. The Bible never told us yet that Peter was praying. Uh-uh. He was sleeping. He was wearied. He was fainting. He was sleeping. And yet, the angel stepped in and touched him. I want you to decree on top of your voice. Every power of darkness surrounding me. Behold. Here comes the light from the Lord. Disappear! Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. Amen. Amen. In order for anything to take place, Peter need light. In order for him to see who was talking, Peter needed light. Without the light, a man cannot move. The angel knew that Peter, the first thing he needed was to be able to see every darkness that has kept you for so long and you don't know what next step to take. Listen to me everywhere. In darkness, you can't move. In darkness, you don't see help, even when help is available. Listen one more time. The Bible said the angel was there. The light shined. And then this man didn't see until they touched him. Then he opened his eyes. Because of the light, he can now see. Today, whatever has blocked your sight, your spiritual insight, and you cannot discover anything because they kept you in darkness, the darkness will disappear. <laughs> Lift up your right hands one more time and say, Father, every power of darkness surrounding my businesses, surrounding my marriage, surrounding my life, behold, 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 here comes the light. So yes. The first thing is the light. What do I call it? Where there is darkness, human being cannot perform. The angel shines the light. Now, the second thing we see that we're using for prayer today, that's your number one prayer point. If I don't remember it, keep it and pray it. Behold, an angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. Mm. Amen. Look up and listen. Maybe it was in Africa where the Nepa took light. But heaven brought light. In that prison, they did not say whether there is electricity. 
but the angel brought light. I don't know who dimmed your light. I don't know who brought you into an isolation of darkness. I don't know what has brought your situation into darkness. Here comes the light. Oh, I'm talking to somebody in the house. Darkness in the area of your marriage. Darkness in decisions to make. Everything seems dark. I am come to announce to you the light has come. Verse number six, seven, seven now. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and the light shines in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side. Look up, everybody. He smote Peter on where? The angel stepped in into the prison. Peter was still sleeping. The light shines in the prison. Peter was still sleeping. He's been knocked down so bad that except God Almighty slap him, he won't get up. Amen. 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 The angel now grabbed him. Oh... I'm expecting help from above for somebody here today. You may have been knocked down so bad that it is difficult for you to rise on your own. I am requesting for divine helper for you today. He will will raise you up. He raised him up. And then the last passage I will read before we start to pray. And the angel said to him, And the angel said to him, guide thyself. Bind bind on thy sanders. Listen to me, everybody. Do what again? Number one, guide thyself. Dress up and wear your sanders. Look up, church. When a prisoner goes inside the prison, they will take the sanders or the shoe and keep a locker for them and lock the sander inside a locker. They will take the cloth and put it inside a locker and lock it. Do they give the key to the prisoners? On this occasion, without key, the angel says, take your sanders. The next thing is Peter supposed to say, Sir, they are all taken from me and locked. And I don't know where the key is. How about your garment? Put it on. The next thing Peter was supposed to say, Sir, I understand what you are saying, but you don't understand me. My clothes were locked up when I was coming in. The angel said, Peter, take your garment. Take your sanders. I want to decree today. It does not matter how many years they have taken something from you. In this imprisonment where they kept you. They took your children. You can't produce children. They took your wealth. You can't be successful. They stripped you of every good thing. Even your health. In the next few more moments, a decree is coming from above. And when you hear that command, take it. Someone say, I grab it. Look at the way you say, say, I grab it. Simon supposed to say, sir, this thing has been kept. I was preaching somewhere and I was ministering and the Lord opened my eyes just as you see some of the few ministrations that a woman I was standing with was supposed to have three children by this time, but she had none. She was barren for more than 10, 9 years or so. And then I said, God, what are you saying? God says, see the children. And God opened up a big tree. Opened it like it has an automatic door opener. And I saw the children growing up according to their age inside the tree. 
male, female, three of them, they grew up there, they were there, and locked there. And God says, my son, command that these children go to this womb. I've never had that in my life until then in my ministry. Command these three children. They belong to this womb, but they have been locked out. Command them to come out. Those are the children I gave to that girl, that woman. I stood up and said, Father, I decree. Actually, when I was praying for the woman, she didn't know what I was saying. I said, all of you three children, come in one by one. She opened her eyes, was looking at me. Because I wish you see what I see and know what I know. Come out from the tree. Enter this womb. Before I finished, she collapsed on the floor. She was rolling. I asked one usher to hold her tight, and my hand remained in her stomach for the next 15, 7 to 15, 7 and 8, 15 minutes. I can't remember the exact time. And God says, when you remove your hand, then the last baby will have entered the womb. By the time I finish and remove my hand, the Holy Ghost says it's over. I removed my hand. I left. Few months later, the woman got pregnant. And the miracle was that she, she became pregnant with triplets. Three of the children came together at the same time. I don't know what the enemy has stolen. I don't know what they have taken from you for so long. Today, by correction, all will be restored. Your husband, your health, your joy, your peace, your money, your life, all that they have stolen. The angel told Peter, take it all. And Peter did not complain. Peter didn't say, sir, they locked them. As at that time when the angel said, take your sander. For that pronouncement, the key that locked the locker will melt. The keys that held her, his clothes will shrink. At that pronouncement, and I'm standing to declare today, I am not here to entertain you. I'm here by the power of the almighty deliverer. Guide thyself. Bind thy sanders. And so he did. And he said unto him, cast thy garment ah, and follow me. The question is, what were the soldiers, the soldiers doing? Everybody listen carefully. We are praying here now. Were the soldiers still there? Huh? Are you sure? Do they still have their guns? Do they still have their guns? Are you sure? So why can't they shoot Peter or the angel? Why? Huh? They have been overpowered by the creator. Now, in other words, they are still physically there, but they were suspended. Their actions were suspended. The iron that bounds the feet, the chain that bounds the feet, and the hands of Peter became melted, paralyzed. They shake that they came down on their own. Peter, the Bible didn't say Peter struggled to get up. As the boy said, get up, and he stood up, the chain fell. The one in the hands fell. And then the next question will be: Peter will say, uh, okay, some people are here. They are watching me. Now, listen. They cock their guns. Come, sir. You look like one of the soldiers. This will be another soldier. Come, sir. They cock their guns. They're doing their job. I'm holding up and closing from here. This is, yes, this is a, an intelligent soldier. This is another one. Amen. Where is Peter? Looking for Peter today. Peter. Peter. No, no. Yo, Peter. You are. You are Peter. 
You are Peter. Someone say, I'm coming out. 